Hey everybody, welcome back. This is James Mahoney from Black Lobster Academy. In our last tutorial we covered the uh, paintbrush. In this tutorial we're going to cover some of your other tools that are in your toolbox. Uh, many of these are very similar to the paintbrush and let's get started. Let's start with the eraser. The eraser works just like the paintbrush and does pretty much what you'd expect. However, it erases the layer that you're on. So you have to select the layer. We're going to cover more about layers in another tutorial. But you have to select the layer that you want to erase. In this case, I just have a big um, orange rectangle. And to select the eraser, you can either hit the E key, or you can come over here and select it from your tool palette. Once you have it selected, it works a lot like a brush. You can you have the same brush presets. If you right click, it brings up your brush preset menu. You can also modify them using your brush settings. You can change anything about the brush that you want, just like the brush. And then when you stroke, it will erase. So no big surprises there. The stamp tool is a little bit more interesting. The stamp tool is this one here, which is also the, you can also access with the letter S. I find the stamp tool tends to work better with a hard edge brush. If you use a soft edge brush, it'll tend to create something that's a little bit blurry. What's interesting about the stamp tool is that you, if you look at the presets up here, you one of the main things that you're going to want to change is whether it's a, a line sample or not, and I'll explain that in a minute, or whether it's sampling from all layers or just the current layer or current and below. So for right now I'm going to do it this way. And then you press the option key to set your target of where you're starting from, where you're cloning from. So let's say I want to clone this section over here to somewhere over here. So maybe I pick that corner. Now when I go to draw, I'm going to clone from whatever I draw over to this other area. Pretty cool, huh? I can keep going. So notice how every time I put it down, it starts in that same spot. Now if I change this to aligned sample, now let's say I pick uh, in the center of this circle, and now I start Oops, and now I start down here. It doesn't reset that center point. Does that make sense? Let me show you that again. So now I'm going to sit my, my set my sample point from right here. And whenever I start, now it's always aligned to that point. If you play with it a little bit, it'll make a lot of sense to you. Next, we're going to look at the dodge, burn, and sponge tools. And those are over here. You can access them with the letter O, or you can come here if you hold down, you have Dodge, Burn, and Sponge. The Dodge tool will brighten whatever's as you paint. It will take whatever the, the value is that's underneath that and will brighten it. The, sponge, uh, sorry, the Burn tool will do the opposite and will darken it. And the Sponge tool will desaturate it. There you go, you can see it there. It will desaturate the color. You also have some options up here. You can saturate or desaturate. For the dodge tool, you can control whether you're working on the midtones, shadows, or highlights. The exposure will adjust how much of it you're going to change. So uh, high values will mean you're going to change a lot. Small values would be slight change. Protect tones means it's going to not shift the hue and the tone. The burn tool is very similar. It has the same thing for mid-tones, shadows, and highlights, and an exposure setting, which is going to basically the strength of the tool. Another grouping of tools can be found in your tools palette is the Blur, Sharpen, and Smudge. 
and there right above here they look like this little drop that's the blur tool you also have the sharpen tool and the smudge tool let's start with the blur tool select the blur tool up here you have uh, you can control the mode and the strength and whether or not you're sampling all layers or just the current layer and again all of these brushes that I've been showing you in in this tutorial um, behave just like the paint brushes you have access to all of these brushes and all of the settings let's let's zoom in a little works just pretty much how you would expect blurs that out sharpen tool does just the opposite You can see there it's way over sharpened. Smudge tool. Of all of these, the smudge tool is probably the most useful one to me. I'll often uh, need to create a shape. I'll use the paintbrush and paint something. Switch to the smudge tool and then smudge it to create the shapes that I want. The next tool we're going to look at is the healing brush tool. There's several other ones that are also very interesting. They all have um, very similar behaviors uh, and you use them for different kinds of things. I probably should do a, a separate tutorial on just that. But for, just to show you the gist of it, we're going to select the main the the top one, which is the spot healing brush tool. And you want to make sure that you set this to content aware. And for this case, we sample all layers means it's going to look at every layer on here and make changes. And what it does is it allows, it looks at the area around it and fills it in. So for instance, if I wanted to get rid of these little dots here, I could just go like that, paint over it, and it makes them go away. Can get rid of whole areas like that and it's pretty smart if this was instead of just a solid background if it was uh, bricks or something like that it would uh, try to do its best to try to fill it in using the same patterns that are in the background Now let's test the spot healing brush and see how well it does. It's best if you do it in the smallest area as possible. That's not too bad. It's a little blurry from up there. But you got you get the idea. If you right click, you'll see you can change the size, hardness, and spacing, but you cannot use any of the regular brushes. Okay, let's look at the gradient tool. Gradient tool can be found right here or you can press the letter G. The gradient is up here in the upper left. If you click on that, up will pop a gradient editor. And what this is showing you is the colors are selected from my uh, foreground and background colors. If, if I choose this preset, it's going to be gradation from the foreground to the background, fully opaque. If I pick the second one, it's going to be just the foreground color to transparent. So let's take a look at these. I'm going to create a selection so we can look at the gradient in a bounded area. Come back to the gradient tool. And you click in one area and then you drag. If I hold down the shift key, it'll maintain a straight line. And it will lay in a gradation of color from one, one end to the other. If I do it smaller, We'll do that. Now let's try try a different one. This is the one with transparency. And you can see the difference. So you can also change these gradients. 
by clicking up there and changing these sliders. The top sliders represent opacity. So now it's opaque in the middle and transparent on the sides. These, the ones on the bottom represent color stops. I can click here and replace that with any color I'd like. And you can keep adding these. And now when I do the gradient, it's like that. You can also save these, um, save these gradients, create a new gradient, uh, etc. It should be pretty obvious, I think. And that's the gradient tool. So the last tool I'm going to show you is the Move tool. We now have a square. If I come up here and select the Move tool, which is also the V key, I can grab that and move it around. If I hold down the Shift key, it will restrain the movements, horizontal, vertical. If I hold down the Option key, it will duplicate it. If I hold down the Option key and the Shift key, it will duplicate it and it will align it, either horizontal or vertical, depending on how you start the move. An interesting thing to note is that if you, in that case, I just had this one layer and I was moving it. So what it does is it creates the duplicate on another layer. If I had been selected, if I selected it first, and you see the marching ants around it, so you know it's selected, and I do the exact same thing, you'll notice that it will make the same copy. Let's, let's do it down here. It'll make the same copy, but it keeps it all on the same layer. The other things to note about the Move tool are the, the sets you, setups you have up here. The biggest one is probably the Auto Select. So now I have, let's see, in this case, with Auto Select off, no matter where I move, I'm going to move that. If I have Auto Select on, it's going to find the element that's below the cursor, and that's and it's going to switch to that. So now you see that it switched the layers. So now when I move, it's this. I can move that, and this is very useful when you need it, and it's a real pain when you don't. So you're going to be switching that quite a bit. And that's pretty good for now. You have uh, alignment tools up here uh, to help you align things. So that's pretty much it for the uh, other tools. Um, many of them were similar to the paintbrush, and you could use the, the same brush presets. And then the last few were separate. In the next section, we're going to cover making selections. Thanks.